push down, pull it out. Okay, let's do that one more time, Zachy. Lightsaber reviews are never easy. What's up guys, I'm Bobby, I'm back here in the Geek Culture studio. We had a lot of fun unboxing the Mandalorian helmet review and uh, the guys asked me back if I would be interested to do the global unboxing of Ahsoka Tano's lightsaber from Hasbro, the Force Effects Elite version. And I said, of course I wanna see this because, you know, I mean, I am a fan of more of the movie uh, canon in terms of, you know, obviously the nine films and then the Mandalorian, where I saw Ahsoka Tano in there with the white sabers. However, this is a little bit different. I'll talk about that later on in the review, but I was interested to see what Hasbro Pulse is doing with the new lightsabers, because I am interested in the dark saber when it comes out, and I thought this would be a good segue into that, because you gotta start building the lightsaber sooner or later, and it's always been a dream of mine to, as a kid to have a lightsaber, so now this is my chance to unbox it. Anyway, what we're gonna do, we're gonna do an unboxing. We're gonna walk through all the settings on this, how it works, and for a lot of you out there that want to compare it, we actually have two Force Effects sabers from 2007, the Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker, plus the Galaxy Edge customizable version with that. And we'll compare all those sabers with this to see which one is right for you. Well, of course, the 2007 ones are hardly available. And if you can get them on eBay, they're going to cost a pretty penny. So this might be your best bet. But nonetheless, let's kick things off. And big thanks to Hasbro for allowing us to be the first in the world to unbox this bad boy. All right, Zach, you ready? Yeah. What happened, man? Did you, your underwear too tight? You don't sound like that. I see your videos. You have a deep, sexy voice. Yeah. There we go. Now we're talking. Get me excited with my saber here. All right. So let's look at the box here for a second. Of course, the Star Wars, uh, Star Wars The Black Series on this. Now, one thing you're gonna take notice of here, if you were thinking that this is the Mandalorian version, it is not. Ahsoka Tano is not Rosario Darson. It is some model they put in makeup. It's not even the animation version. So, having said that, you're not going to get the white saber in this. It's not even gonna be the hilt. Because after she got into that uh, battle with the Darth Maul, then she lost her saber, she had to rebuild them. You're not getting that saber. You're getting the pre-Darth Maul version of these, okay? And you're only getting one in the box. So if you wanna be Ahsoka Tano, you need two. That means you gotta buy two sabers. These don't come cheap. Save your money if you need to, but if you're just a collector, one should be good enough. All right, uh, looking through the box, so you do see the saber right there. It's Force FX Elite this time, the 2021 edition. It will show you the various different colors. You get the uh, kind of the lime green or uh, almost yellowish green. You get the blue and you get the green color on that. It obviously talks about the various different effects. We'll swivel this around. That didn't hurt me at all. Um, we've got here, can change all the blades, got progressive lighting on this, you got clash effects, you got a kyber crystal in this as well. Now, we'll talk about how this, how this kyber crystal works. It is different from the Galaxy Edge version of it, but nonetheless, it's cool they put it inside there and you can also change the color of the kyber crystal to the blue, the uh, yellowish green and the green. And also you get a stand as well. And the stand is not laying down horizontal, it is vertical, which is also a nice effect to that. So, that's the box in a nutshell. 14 and above. So, if you're a kid, you're young Anakin from the Phantom Menace, you can't play with this. You can, you have to be a certain age, so. Now, this has been unboxed by the Geek Culture team already because they gotta see if it works or not because if it doesn't want to send it back to Hasbro, it does work. Spoiler alert. Anyway, let's open this up and let's see what we've got inside. Let's walk through in a second. Instruction manual. How to use the saber. Trust me, you're gonna to wanna to read this. I'll walk you through how to set it up. It is a little bit, um, it takes a little time. A little patience, because there's some things you have to put together and how it works. You've got your saber back here, of course. This is not a combat ready saber, so don't go beating up your neighbor, or your wife, or husband, or girlfriend, or boyfriend. If they have a, you know, just don't do it. Just put it on the wall, swing it around, and have some fun, but that's as far as you wanna go. Of course, you got the hilt here, kyber crystal. You got your stand here. And you got this um, thing, thingamajig, which is like a screw thing. I'll show you how that works, because if you lose this, you're basically screwed, pun intended. You guys want to see the hilt? That's one of the most important things on a saber. Actually, it is the most important thing. Here it is. We'll put this aside real quick. This is the hilt. This is metal, and it feels very well constructed. Um, 
I will tell you that this is uh, pretty accurate to her hilt that she was using in the Clone Wars prior to her uh, fight with uh, Darth Maul. So obviously her saber has changed after that. And you will be able to tell right away that this is made in China, if you were wondering, because all of the information is massively written on the on bottom of this hilt right there. So everything from Lucas Films to all your coding to USA, California, everything. So obviously, yeah, I mean, again, not a big deal. You're not gonna look at the bottom of the hilt, but if you are one of those that likes a very clean look to your saber, you might be a little bit perturbed about this, but it's not a deal breaker in my personal opinion. Uh, moving up on the saber here, you got your buttons here. Um, this is the power button here. Now, mm, if you bite your nails, if you have very fat fingers, if you had a manicure and they cut too short, you're gonna have a hard time using the saber. Uh, I'll tell you why in just a bit when we power it all up, but it is a little bit challenging with this button. It's different than the uh, previous Force Effects sabers, but something to take note of. Then also you have this other button here, which gives you more of your sound effects. We'll show you that in sort of lighting effects there. And that's pretty much it, but it does feel really well constructed. It's not too heavy, uh, very well balanced. If you wanna swing it around, I'm not gonna do it too much here because there's a lot of expensive collectibles and I don't wanna break anything. The finishing is pretty good. Some of the edges are a little bit sharp, but we'll talk about that later on in the review. Moving on, let's show you the Kyber crystal here for a second. Unlike the Galaxy Edge version, it is not RFID tagged, so you cannot put different Kyber crystals in a lightsaber and it will change colors, no. Power's on based on this and you can get your various colors through that, but this is it. And it's just more for show than anything else. It doesn't stay in the saber when you're actually plug in the blade. You'll find out in just a bit when we put that all together. Uh, here is the stand. Now this stand is actually really nice. It's a metal construction, feels really well made. Um, what's cool about this though, or what's interesting, well, what's cool about it is actually that it's vertical. So you put your saber up like this. So if I wanna, here, let me do this for a second. I'm gonna be smarter than the saber, right? That's the wrong way to do it. Hold on a second. I gotta take this piece out. Okay, there we go. So as you can tell, this thing goes like this. That's cool, right? However, there's something a little inaccurate about this stand that I think some of you are gonna see when you look at this closely. Look at the design right here. That's something from the Death Star. Hmm. Last I figured, Ahsoka was not part of the Empire, was she? No. It's a small thing, but uh, overall the stand looks really cool. And uh, yeah, that's the only way you can do it. There's no horizontal way you can lay it down, right? Can't do it that way, Zach, it doesn't work? Nope. No, doesn't work at all. Don't wanna try it, you'll break your saber. All right, so let's get the saber out here on this real quick. Okay, so we take the blade out and we'll put that to the side. And that's pretty much everything here. Now this blade is uh, very lightweight. Again, this is not a combat ready blade. So uh, if you do have a combat a saber and you wanna try this out, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, so just keep that in mind, but this is good for just even when I'm playing things like this, this is fine. But anything like when you whack at the saber or go full on, I wouldn't recommend it. Start off with this. We already put batteries in this, just to sort of speed things up. Now, you can press the power button and it'll give that sound when the blade's not in. Okay? Sounds good. Speakers are pretty loud, I have to say. Oh, very loud. Um, now, of course, it depends on your battery level. As soon as your battery starts draining the power, you will notice a little difference in sound. It happens with all the sabers anyway, but this sounds really good. Um, but as you could tell, I was really trying to get my finger in that, uh, this little area to turn it on because it's very narrow, very narrow. That sounded wrong, dude. That sounded, very, that, sounded, that sounded very wrong. We actually have a piece here. So what you wanna do, this piece is integral to actually putting in some pieces. So we're gonna put the Kyber crystal in first. So as you can tell, you've got some grooves here and then you've got this sort of uh, mechanism inside. So you wanna do is try to find it and you wanna unscrew this piece. Let's do this real quick. Am I doing this right? There we go, I'm doing this right. That piece you gotta take out. Do not lose this piece, whatever you do, because it is integral. So let's put in the Kyber crystal first to show you how this works. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna drop it in, 
and you just gotta kind of maneuver it until it kind of drops. Just kind of turn it around a little bit. Drops, lock it in, and now, different sound, and you can actually see the kyber crystal inside of it. Now, right now it's turned to blue. If you wanna change the colors of it, what you're gonna do is hold a power button and this orange button here together. So now it's green. There we go. Now it's a darker green. Yeah, so you can change the colors that way. Then what you do is you, if you wanna take it out to see what the Kyber crystal looks like. Okay, you can see it's a little bit green. I think we have to turn off the lights for you to see it because it's very faint. So, okay, Zach, you turn it off. It's just ever so lightly lit. It's not gonna light up anything for that matter, but it's just a little bit of hint of green and it will fade over time. So this is just more aesthetic, just something to show off once in a while. But to be frank with you, in my personal opinion, once you do this a couple times, that's it, you're gonna put it on the shelf and you're gonna forget about it. Because you're either gonna display this, maybe the kyber crystal next to it and the blade, but I don't think you're gonna be taking this in and out to light it up. So um, unfortunately, I wish this was battery powered, so in a button next to it, so you could actually change the colors. That'd be kind of a cool display to have the lightsaber on the display plus the kyber crystal with the, uh, the color that you'd like it to be, but that is not the case. This powers it up, this charges it up, but it only stays on for a little bit of time. Let's put the saber in, the moment of truth. So, as I said, don't lose this, especially if you want to put the saber on. So how this works is, I'm going to take this in, push and lock it, turn the lock. Now it's pretty secure, but you want to put this metal piece on top and lock this in because you don't want your blade to come out on accident. And then you got to take this screw piece. Yep, bear with me guys. Are you following me why this is a little bit uh, difficult? The moment of truth. Ooh, look at that. This is the yellowish green. So technically, this would be the Shoto color, right? It's yellowish green. As you can tell, pretty responsible. The light is pretty bright. It's not overly bright, but it's decent enough, okay? Very good effects. I think it's got a gyroscope in there. Sounds like it. Then, of course, then we have this orange button here, which if you want to burn through a wall, saber clash, you have this effect. You know, if you want to get blaster shots, and it shoots white. Then, you want to change the color. To blue. So it's actually, in terms of the balance, this is actually quite light. So I think, I'm not going to swing it around too much here because I don't want to break anything, but it feels actually really good. In my personal opinion, I wish this was a little bit brighter. Now it might look brighter to you on camera because of the video aspect of it, but in person, it's not that bright. So, I mean, if you're in a dark room, of course it's gonna be pretty, br pretty bright, but I think according to other sabers I've seen out there, I think this is more on the medium to dimmer side of things. Um, so, but it's got a lot of cool effects like this right here is pretty interesting. The sound is good as well. I mean, the speakers are really good here, but yeah, wish it was a little bit brighter. Anyway, that's pretty much the Osoka Tano uh, saber on this and uh, yeah, I mean, it feels good, very well balanced. And then we just press this off. Does it change the white? No, it doesn't change the white. It doesn't change the white, Zachy. Yeah, that's, that's something, well, if you want it white, you just turn it off. That's how you get white. So you can turn it back on. Actually, we'll make the saber white right now. Go, Zachy, go, it's white. See how we did it, see how we did it? I wish Hasbro would have included that it actually had a white light to it. Because for a lot of us out there, who just followed the film canon. You know Ahsoka Tano from that and she's got her white sabers. And then they released the saber right after The Mandalorian season two. So you think to yourself, well, of course it would be that color saber, but it's not. I'm gonna go, oh, you want the other Ahsoka Tano saber, right? You want the white one? Of course we're gonna make it. So, save some money. It's probably gonna come very soon. I think for you guys out there that are collectors, you're gonna really like this piece, especially if you're Ahsoka Tano fans. But uh, if you're waiting for those uh, other sabers, I gotta keep doing this. Ah, this tool. 
But one of the good things about the Sabre, especially in our climate here in Singapore, is there's, there are no rubber bits on this. So you'll see in just a bit why I talk about that because in Singapore, with our climate here, it's very humid and some of these collectible toys can warp and melt over time due to the heat. And you're not gonna have that problem with the Ahsoka Tano uh, Sabre from Hasbro on this one. So good job on Hasbro for making this humidity proof. Now it's comparison time. We got two Force Effects uh, Sabres from 2007, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader versus Ahsoka Tano Sabre. Let's look at uh, Vader's for a second here. By the way, you cannot take Vader's saber out on this one. It is stuck inside. But as you can tell right here by the hilt, a lot of this plastic has melted uh, or it's kind of warped a little bit. You can see some of the plastic around here. There's some uh, warpage going on. This is something that happens in our climate. It's unfortunate. This is why a lot of us that do collect hot toys, we have, let's say, dry cabinets or we have our air cons you know, working 24 seven. So we don't come across this, but it is what it is. Um, in terms of the weight, I will say the Vader is definitely heavier than Ahsoka Tano's. Now, of course, hilt size, Vader is slightly taller, slightly taller. There's a bit more plastic on it. Now, it's a very hard composite plastic. It does feel pretty good, but you got a little bit of shiny plastic here. And then, of course, you've got this rubber bits that have been uh, molded a little bit over time. But I would say the Vader is more substantial in weight. Now, of course, Vader's saber is going to be heavier. I mean, the way that he fought was obviously different than Ahsoka Tano. But uh, yeah, that is really some of the main difference. Let's turn Vader on versus Ahsoka Tano. And let's see how this rolls. Now, this is very loud as well, okay? And as you can tell, there's very minimal writing here at the bottom of the hill, which I personally like. I know this is a small thing, but I like that this is minimalist because as a collector's piece, we know these products are made in various different countries, but I don't need them to be written in bold lettering on the hill. You know I mean? That's just my personal opinion. But I also like how easy this is to turn on. Look at that. Switch on. Now it's not as responsive as Ahsoka Tano's, but again, this is 2007 versus 2021. So there is going to be a difference in technology that's in these sabers. But the audio sounds fantastic. Actually, let's turn off the light, Zaki. Let's uh, see how these blades light up against each other. Turn this on. So in terms of light, I would say Vader could be slightly brighter, just slightly. But see how responsive this is? Vader's a little, it's okay, not bad. But I feel like Ahsoka is a little bit better. You see, there's a little difference. But that's pretty much all you can do with this one on this point. I mean, there's really not much you can do versus this one. You got the LED effects happening in the Saber. On Vader's, obviously, the LED technology wasn't as good in 2007 as it is in 2021. So you are going to miss out on some of those effects. But it is easier to turn off than Ahsoka Tano. Hold that down for a second. Ooh, okay, now we're in a different ball game, folks. Luke obviously is not as strong as his dad, for obvious reasons. This is much lighter than Vader's. Still has the same concept of turning it on. Now the battery on this is maybe not as strong as the Vader because the sound is not as loud, right? Um, you can remove this blade as well, and I'll show you how that happens. In terms of build quality though, I would say, looking at this, I gotta give it to the new uh, Saber for the Ahsoka Tano's one from Force FX Elite because even this, this kind of piece right here just feels a little bit off in terms of the metal and the design. Now, of course, they're trying to be accurate and you know, back when they made these Sabres in the 70s, they weren't as refined as they are today in terms of design and concept, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not bad. I mean, it's Luke Skywalker, so you're gonna get a Luke Skywalker saber no matter what. This is like, you know, you want a saber, you want Luke's. But yeah, it's actually not too bad. Let's turn on the, uh, let's do blue versus blue Zaki. Let's turn off the light again. So I would say on this one, and I can say Ahsoka Tano's is slightly brighter, uh, but again, this could be a battery thing with this uh, saber, so I don't want to discount Luke's on this. But in terms of the responsiveness, you see the difference? So this is not as responsive, of course, as Luke's. 
and you, you do get that, you do get those snaps, but you see how you get the, the white lights on the Shokatanos? Nothing on loops, just sound. That's the same with Vader's as well. That's very cool, right? Build quality, I had to give it to the new one. Design-wise, I think materials-wise, I gotta give it to the new one as well. So in terms of removing this lightsaber, it's actually a lot easier than this one you're gonna see. So all you do is unscrew this portion here, and then once you've got that portion, pull it out, and you just pull out the saber, that's it. There's no plastic thingamajig you need to slide down the saber to unscrew the metal piece and take it out. It's just very, very simple. And if you wanna put it back in, it makes a sound, lets you know that it's clicked in, and then, Screw it back in like that. A few moments later. These go in 2007 products. But yeah, that's it. So that's pretty much uh, how you handle the uh, Luke Skywalker saber on that. Okay, so now that we covered the two force effect sabers, let's move on to the Galaxy Edge saber. For price point's sake, these two are very comparable in terms of price point. Now, not everybody can go to Galaxy's Edge right now because of course, what's happening around the world. But for those of you who live near Disneyland in Florida or in California, we all envy you here at Geek Culture because you have access to this, we don't. But luckily someone brought this in before, our travel stopped, so we were able to have one here in the studio. Now just first impressions, this is actually the first time I actually really been playing with a Galaxy's Edge Saber. And I gotta say, this is quite amazing. If you guys have never held one, this is massive. This is heavy. Your arms are gonna be yoked in no time, right Zachy? Yeah. Can you turn it on? Just makes a little bit of a sound, but there's no saber inside. But there's a kyber crystal inside. So what's interesting about the, uh, the Galaxy Edge saber with the kyber crystal inside, you can actually change the color of the blade based on the kyber crystal. That's not the same with the Ahsoka Tano's one, as I showed you before. It's just more for visual effects and just kind of a, a fun thing to show off but this has more usability inside of it. But of course, to get to the Kyber Crystal requires a lot of removing of parts. So since we're doing a comparison, let's go through that now. Take off the bottom, take off the top. You can do a top or bottom, it doesn't make a difference. Then you can move the, this side here, this side here. Then you can just pull this off, it's magnetic. There's your crystal inside. So, there you go. And then if you wanna see how it lights up, just press the battery pack here. Beautiful cue, Zaki, that was great. Fantastic, look at that. Look at that dimming effect you have there. Cinematic, look at that uh, hybrid crystal. Now this actually is brighter than the one that comes with the Ahsoka Tano one. And of course, as I mentioned before, you can change the crystal and it gives you a whole different personality to your saber. Now, let's put the blade in. All you gotta do is kind of just turn it around, lock it in, makes that sound, and... Ooh. This sounds badass. I wanna be frank with you, this sounds pretty amazing. So as we put them close together, you can see the build quality is different. The Galaxy Edge version is longer, but of course you can customize your hilt to whatever you like it to be. Now in terms of the two sabers here, let's move over here for a second. You're gonna notice that the Galaxy's Edge is a bit longer, but again, you can customize this to your size liking. Uh, this, the Ahsoka Tano's is lighter, and it feels a little bit more responsive in terms of its sound. This is not bad as well. So you are gonna get some sort of uh, sound and sort of light uh, effects, but I will say the Ahsoka Tano is a little bit more responsive than the Galaxy's Edge version. But the audio from this Galaxy's Edge version is so nice. This is really, really nice. Um, but they seem to be almost like the same blade if you look at them on the front of it. So these are a very close call on this. I guess it really depends. If you have the option to go to Disneyland, this might be a good option to get into. I mean, you're gonna get it anyway. You're probably gonna have a few sabers. You're not gonna just have one. But the Ahsoka Tano one, I mean, when you compare them all, these are really good. Now, I will say on the Galaxy's Edge, this switch is very easy to knock, so you have to be careful on that. The one thing is, while I did was uh, sort of criticizing this as being difficult to turn on because of the grooves being very narrow to get your finger inside, it actually does make it so you don't 
accidentally turn off this saber so easily. So that's one of the positives. So I guess Hasbro was thinking, okay, do we want you to turn your saber off and on easily or do they want, we want to make it a little more difficult? You have to work hard for your saber. And I guess the option for the work hard for your saber more. Does that sound right, Zaki? Now, one thing I do want to talk about between these two sabers is, of course, the stands. Now, this is sold separately. This one comes with the saber, but I got to hand it to uh, Galaxy's Edge here. They've done a fantastic job. This is metal. It's very durable. You can adjust these spacers where you want them to be. Let me just take out the saber here and just lay it down. Look at that. That is very cool. I think for some of you out there that if you have a large cabinet, you want to have the blade on this and that will actually work depending on the size of your cabinet. So technically if Geek Culture didn't have all these great toys in here and we just want to do one long stretch, you could do that with the saber inside. However, with the Sokotanos, not going to happen. I do wish there was a horizontal option for this. There isn't at this time, maybe they'll sell a, a, a stand separately or you can purchase one on eBay or somewhere else that you can put it on, but uh, it is what it is. But I will say, this makes the choice, if you had to choose between one of these, much more difficult. But overall, I gotta say that this is, a, this is a fun little saber. This is fun, I think, for collectors out there who are big fans of Ahsoka Tano that want her saber. I think this is one to get. Of course, you need two, so you have to buy two. You can just have one. And Hasbro didn't give you a, a package kit set with that, so you have to buy double. It is what it is. But I can't wait for the Dark Saber, and I know a lot of you out there have already pre-ordered the Dark Saber and are big fans of that. I am as well. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely, uh, this would be one for the collector's kit for sure. So final thoughts on this Saber here. I mean, yeah, I do wish the button was a little bit bigger so it was easier to turn on, but I do understand why Hasbro did it. This orange button here, it's not bad. I mean, I wish it was a little bit uh, more solid in terms of its build quality. But overall, the weight of this feels good. Um, very well balanced. I mean, if you want to uh, do some sort of cosplay with this, you want to swing it around, you're much more talented with a saber than I am, then I think you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. Um, again, it's not a combat ready saber, so please don't go out there whacking things because if you break it, yeah, it's gonna be expensive to uh, replace this. But overall, I think uh, Hasbro's done a pretty good job with this overall. I just gotta remove the stickers here. And yeah, I think uh, stand-wise, legitimate. It's an empire stand though, but it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, overall I highly recommend this and I think this is a really good stepping stone into the dark saber that's coming out from Hasbro Pulse very, very soon. I'm hearing from the guys here at Geek Culture that is gonna be coming in and we may get a global first unboxing of that. Just putting that out there. And maybe they'll invite me back, who knows. Thank you so much for joining us and let me know any questions you have in the comments section below. If, uh, if you want us to play around with this more compared to other sabers, we'll try to do what we can. Again, we're in Singapore, so we don't have access to all the great sabers everybody else does, but we will do our best. And with that, guys, stay safe, take care, and we'll chat to you soon. Look at that ending. Okay, I'm done with my saber. <laughs>